Right, so in my whole 16 years of existence on this planet, yes, I know a very long time, I'm basically a granddad at this point. I have never met a single person who has ever said that they do not like Spider-Man. Spider-Man is just one of those characters that everybody seems to adore. For some reason, people just like him more than any other superhero. I mean, he was the superhero I grew up with most. Uh, I watched the whole Raimi trilogy over and over and over and over again. The Spider-Man films were always something I used to watch when I was little. Uh, it was either that or Matilda. And they, they were just the two main things that I grew up with and I will always have a special connection to Spider-Man for that reason. And with the release of the new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, I thought it was a good time to maybe do a ranking of my personal favorites uh, from worst to best and yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna try not to waste too much time. I'm gonna get into the video and yeah. So starting off at the 10th spot on the list, I have got The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This seems to be the one that appears most frequently at the bottom of everybody, everybody's list. It's basically if you took Spider-Man 3's messy plot and just made it so much less fun. I mean, Andrew Garfield's alright in this. Gwen Stacy is also a really nice character to play off and Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield do, a really, uh, do really well in their roles. But aside from that, that's kind of the main thing that sticks out with this film. It hits all the correct beats when it comes to a Spider-Man film, but I just feel like it goes a bit too far when you try and have to care about all the Peter Parker's parents and all the stuff with Green Goblin coming back and, and even Electro, who is known as being kind of pointless in this film. It's just a really messy film that I don't visit very often and find it kind of hard to watch at points. I still think it's a good time though, don't get me wrong. I just think this really lacks in comparison to all the other Spider-Man films aside from one. The only noteworthy thing in this film, realistically, is the ending. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched this film and if you haven't, what the hell are you doing on this video anyway? Uh, the, Gwen Stacy's death is the only really good bit about this film. I'll admit, that's great. That's, that's probably one of the best moments in the whole collection of movies. But for me, this is at the bottom of my list. Now, probably a bit of a controversial one, Spider-Man Homecoming is next. Uh, I went to the cinema to see this. I didn't even realize there was a new Spider-Man film coming out. I think I was like, I think I would have been around 11 when this came out. And I went and I didn't enjoy it when I first watched it. I thought it was a pile of shit. The Spider-Man film, I think I've watched the least, aside from the new one, of course. Uh, but yeah, this film just, this film just kind of bored me. Uh, this film just was boring at parts. It didn't feel very fun. I think Tom Holland was okay in it. I didn't care for the love interest in this film. Uh, Tom Holland's character, and I'm sorry, can't think of the other uh, woman's name. Uh, I thought those two didn't really work together. I, don't get me wrong, I think Spider-Man Homecoming is a fine film. It's okay, it's a fun watch, you can just put it on. It doesn't really have that personal connection with me. When it first came out, everybody was raving about it, saying it was the best Spider-Man film ever. And then when the next one came out, everybody was like, nah, this is an homecoming shit. And then No Way Home's, uh, then Far From Home was shit, but No Way Home is amazing. I don't really uh, grasp the general audience opinion. Aside from that though, it's okay. I would watch it. So anyway, next, The Amazing Spider-Man. This may be even lower on people's list, but I think this is a good film. I think it's enjoyable. Andrew Garfield is actually good in this. And this was the first film I saw at the cinema when I was think I was like seven. I don't even know. I think I was about six or seven. And before before seeing this, I'd watched the Tobey Maguire films, of course. Those were like my childhood. Uh, but yeah, when I went to go see this when I was little, I loved it. Uh, of course, I don't like it anywhere near as much as I used to, but I still think it's good. This is the main thing with these Amazing Spider-Man films. Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield are always good in them. I think the villain was pretty decent. I think the motive is good for why he does it. It's just what he does is kind of stupid. It's a comic book film. I'm not expecting it to be bloody the next Godfather. I think there's actually quite a few cool scenes in it as well. Uh, the basketball scene is legendary. I don't know why I love that scene so much. This is probably my first big, big unpopular opinion, but I think No Way Home is really good. I, I think it's a lot of fun, and for a Spider-Man film, it's great. But for an actual film, there's a, not a lot to it. The whole film is made up out of the previous entries in the whole entire series. Without the previous films, this film does not exist. And while that might sound stupid, 
where, well, it's still fun, it's still good. I, just for me, I can't get over that entirely. I still think it's a really good time, but with that, I feel like I just can't have it above certain others. There's not really much to it, and I think the first hour can be a little bit dull. But, but you know, when Andrew Garfield comes back and Tobey Maguire comes back, then it really, you know, gets into it and it's a lot, it's great from then on out. It's awesome. But the first half is just really slow. I feel like it struggles to find its foot in a little bit in the first hour or so. I still think it's good the first hour. The second half just kind of shits all over that. For that reason, I have to have it this low down, but I still really enjoy this film. I would go to as far as to say it was great. Now, this is another probably unpopular opinion, but yes, I think I prefer Far From Home over No Way Home. This is for the reasoning that I said last time. Far From Home was a weird one for me because I wasn't excited for it really because I didn't really care about superhero films and I didn't like Homecoming much, especially when I first watched it at the cinema anyway. So when it got to Far From Home, I didn't care too much about it, but I was going to go see it just for the fact it was a fucking Spider-Man film. I'm going to go see that. It's me. I went to it regardless. And when I say I was blown away by how good this was, I am not exaggerating. I'll admit now, looking back, it wasn't as great as I realized. I thought it was like a 10 out of 10 film, one of the best movies ever made. Looking back, I've, I've seen that was a bit stupid to say. But still, I think that this film really holds its own. Tom Holland, I really like in this film. Zendaya, I actually think is all right. And I don't really like Zendaya in these movies, I'll admit. I think she's just a bit dull. But she's she's actually all right in this film. I quite enjoy her presence in this one. Jake Gyllenhaal, of course, is fucking sick in this film. Uh, I think he is great as Mysterio. He's probably, aside from Doc Ock, the best villain in the whole franchise. I bloody love him in this one. I still think this is probably the best Tom Holland movie. And whether they'll do another one, I don't think they will. This will probably still stay above. I just have a close connection to this. I think I've seen this three times at the cinema. Uh, it was a really good time. I really enjoyed this one. Yes, I know I've put Spider-Man 3 at this position, but you've got to understand, there's a sense of nostalgia I have with this film. I thought this film was the shit. I will always have a good time while watching this, while I know it's, it's messy as fuck. But this is probably the film I have the most fun with out of all of them. It's, you cannot have a bad time while watching this. You will laugh your head off. You may even shed a tear at the end, you never know. I still think this is so overhated that any person who thinks that this film is shit is stupid and you're a pretentious asshole and I don't like you. And yes, I get everybody's complaints that MJ is a really annoying character, but I still think she's good. I still like her. Uh, and I think the ending's pretty good too. Yeah. I've probably watched this one the most out of all these on the list. And then we've got the new one, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And I'll admit, I'm not as hyped up as everybody else is about this film. This is a really good comic book film. And holy shit, the animation is great. But I don't love it as much as everyone else is making it out to be. From the sounds of how I'm talking about this film, you must think I hate it. No, I think it's still pretty good. I just don't think it holds a story on its own. That is the only issue I have with this film at all. Quite like the villain in this one, very enjoyable, and the pacing's brilliant as well, it flies by, and even the soundtrack is actually surprisingly good, which I should have mentioned that. The ending actually gave me chills when the music started playing, bro. It was actually pretty sick. It may fall when part two comes out, but it also may rise. I don't know. I am very excited to see part two beyond the Spider-Verse. It was good. Now, spot three on the list is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I've recently re-watched this while waiting for Across the Spider-Verse, and it actually grew on me over time. I think it's awesome. It's if you look, It has the Easter eggs that everybody loves when it comes to these Spider-Man films, but it doesn't overdo it like No Way Home. It sticks with it well. It has its own really good story, has its own good origin story, uh, which I do think actually gets improved upon in uh, Across the Spider-Verse. I just think this is a really solid film and it's not far from a nine out of 10 in my opinion. 
the only reason this isn't higher is probably just because of nostalgia reasons, but this is why it's only number three on my list. Realistically, this is probably the best Spider-Man film. Uh, it's just really good. I, I found Miles Morales a little bit annoying at first, found him a bit unlikable, but on a rewatch, I actually come to like him quite a bit more. And I'm excited to see how his trilogy ends. Very excited. Now, spot number two on the list is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, the very first Spider-Man film I ever saw. I was addicted to this movie. Not so much as Spider-Man 3, I'll admit, but I was still addicted to it. It's great. Willem Dafoe is just amazing in this movie. He's hilarious, but he's also kind of creepy. Basically, Willem Dafoe at his finest. Tobey Maguire, don't get me wrong, he's acting not the best in this film. You can't help but just love him. The only downside to this film is that I just think the middle section or so is a little bit boring. Especially when it comes to like the Aunt May stuff. I'm not really the biggest fan of that part. That is the only downside really to this film that I have. I just think uh, the original Spider-Man has so many classic moments to me and so much nostalgia for me personally that I can't put it any lower than, uh, than number two. I will always have a special place for this film in my heart. And I love you Sam Raimi for making this trilogy. And of course, we have Spider-Man 2. Let's be honest, it is just the best superhero film. It's got so many incredible moments. The my back scene, the bank scene, the train scene. Doc Ock is incredible. Okay, I like that with these Spider-Man villains. They always seem to have a nice undertone to them. That sounds a bit creepy. I was a little bit disappointed by how they played it out in No Way Home with his character. But I still think that they did a decent job. But yeah, for me, Spider-Man 2 will always be the go. It's just everything a superhero movie should be. Got awesome characters, got a brilliant score. Weirdly something that I don't expect to talk about uh, when I'm doing reviews, but he's got a nice suit in this film. Yeah, I don't know why I, I thought to mention that, but I think he does. And I actually think MJ is more likable in this one too. Spider-Man 2 is incredible. And if you haven't watched it, please watch it now. It's got that Terminator 2 quality where anybody can like it. And yeah, uh, if you did enjoy this video, then please leave a like. And if you thought I was talking shit, then leave a comment down below of your personal rankings and say what you think I was wrong. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you all later.